it was a dark and dreary morning. But hey, it's always sunny and 70 in the garage. In addition to the work that I'm going to be doing today, I want to make another push for uh, subscribers. I'm uh, in the high 800s, so I'm in the uh, in the home stretch, hopefully, on my way to 1,000. So I appreciate uh, everybody that's been subscribing lately. It's, it's going pretty well, but uh, I'd really appreciate it more, uh, and j at least just as much, if you guys could hit that subscribe button down there in the lower right-hand corner and, uh, and try to get me up to 1,000. Thanks so much. Good morning everybody, about 7.40 or so, Saturday morning, August 10th, or 11th, something. Fixing that hole today, then I think I'm going to get the uh, bonnet out here and uh, assess that a little bit more and take a look and start cleaning it up, especially the underside of that. Going to be a little painful to move, obviously not a whole lot of room and the thing's kind of heavy. And, and try to get that on a stand or something like that. I'd probably have to use the cherry picker for that, but uh, we'll see. See how that goes. And yes, those dents. They're still staring at me. All right, got the piece cut out and fitted up. Um, it falls a little bit. I don't know if you can really see that with the clamps in the way. It kind of falls a little bit in the back as, uh, as that flattens out there, but I'm just going to tack that in and, and pick that up with a hammer. But yeah, that only took about half an hour or so to get that fabricated, cut out, and ready to weld in. So I'm going to go ahead and get that welded in and cleaned up. All right, about uh, 9.20 or so. That side's done. I'm going to take a hammer and dolly to this thing and kind of beat on it a little bit here in a couple minutes. Sorry for the uh, thing going on here. Point out, so I got these two brackets here. You can see them sticking out. And then I don't remember what this thing actually is. Some, some support for part of that. I think it attaches to the bonnet somewhere in there. Anyway, um, I might have the wrong side here, but that kind of fits like that. So you can see those two brackets. Well, over here, the bracket's um, not welded anymore, but here it is. I cleaned it up. And again, I think this is just an example of a, of a bad couple spot welds from the factory. Um, you can see the paint indentations there. This, let me find it, the egg old guy there, that other guy there, that other guy there. I tried to clean this side up where they should be, and I don't see them at all. I'm going to take that down a little bit more. But fortunately, the outline is underneath of the, the dirt. The dirt outline is underneath. I'm going to not use that. I've, I've measured it out and got the thing. I still want to uh, epoxy primer all this stuff before I weld it in uh, to get out, out of the way of that weld through primer that I don't really like. So anyway, uh, I'm going to continue on and, and start, uh, start working on this stuff. So before I get started on the body work, I just wanted to show you guys a book that I found. Um, first printed in like 1950 something. It's uh, made by Martin Tool and Forge, who the original guys that bought out Fairmount, which was a big body work and tool company, I guess, back in the 50s and 60s, uh, up into the 80s. So this is the fourth edition of that book. Um, not very big, obviously, but it's all old school stuff. So you can see the cars here, you know, 50s vintage automobiles. But some illustrations, some of the photographs are kind of hard to see. The tools that are that the list in the back are modern tools that you can get from Martin pretty, uh, I don't know, it's about 20 bucks or so, so pricey for what it is, but uh, if you if you picked up on, on some of my stuff, I'm kind of an old school kind of guy where I like the old manuals and the old illustrations and all that kind of stuff. And you know, you can watch YouTube videos all day, but this is another way to learn uh, the Fairmount method, what it's called. Instead of beating the heck out of the metal, looking at it and seeing how the dents work and how they were impacted and trying to reverse the damage vice, just trying to brute force the metal flat so anyway I'd, I'd recommend it I've been through it several times now and, and hope to apply uh, what I'm doing here but I thought I'd just bring that up so it's time to use some new tools alright so this is what I'm dealing with with the front balance so as I trace it across this is the lower edge of the things kinda of sitting upside down now you can definitely see all the dents especially right there the big uh, depression whatever you want to call it come over here it gets really really high so that spot in here looks like it got caught on something maybe and the car backed up and then cleans up okay here kinda of dips down a little bit right there and comes right up and then finishes it up at the edges 
seems okay. Right in there and right in there, that's a pretty big spot. That's what I'm dealing with. This piece in here is pretty torn up, um, even some cracks maybe. Uh, there's, a, there's a pretty big seam right there. Uh, obviously it's all curled up and, and dented and everything, so that's what I think happened there is that whole piece kind of got pulled as the car backed up over something. So anyway, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of subtle, and, uh, and I got my tools out, and I'm just going to kind of work it and see how it goes. Like I said, this is uh, really the first time that I'm going to attempt something like this seriously. I don't, I don't think I've really done some body work, and we'll see how it goes. 11.45, been working on this panel for, uh, I don't know, a couple hours. So made some progress, definitely. You can see the highs and the lows there. Obviously, the lows are where you see the darker red paint. That's the uh, uh, overspray that the uh, previous owner had. And then where you see metal, obviously, was going to be your high spots. So there was a pretty good dent here that I took out. Um, pretty good dents here that I kind of worked and tried to work that seam a little bit. All hammer and dolly work. No... Um, no magic really. The, uh, I still don't think it's exactly, I mean, you can kind of see here the flange kind of bows out a little bit. I need to make that more of a 90 degree, but not too bad. I'm pretty happy with the way that it came out considering that um, I'm kind of still winging it a little bit. But what I'm going to try now is I got another new toy, a metal shrinking disc. This is from Wolf's Metal Fabrication. I think they're in Nebraska. You can find them online. They make a couple different kits here. This is the four and a half inch one, obviously, so I can use it on my four and a half inch grinder. Relatively small, a, uh, a nine inch one that fits, I believe, on a seven inch grinder, or a nine inch grinder, I mean, um, is available. You can see it in the picture there. Probably a little bit better for you know large areas, obviously, like, like entire fender sides and things like that. There may be some wonky editing there. I changed my uh, location. So I have stripped the particular low spot that I want to work on this time of paint. You can, and then I hit it with a block sander. So you can see hopefully the low spot there, it almost looks like a kidney bean right in here. So that's where the sandpaper didn't touch, where it's nice and shiny. So I took the paper down with just an abrasive pad and then hit it with a block sander to scuff it up. And you can see the area that is going to require some attention. So now I'm going to take the, um, shrinking disc. I'm going to hit it for about 15 or 20 seconds. Get it nice and hot. That should let the metal expand. And then I'll cool it. And then as it cools, it should shrink and shrink to the to the general shape of the rest of the area. I got a spray bottle here that I'll use to uh, take care of the heat. And we'll go like that and see what happens. All right, so you can obviously see that steam come off of there. That's a good sign. Means I got some heat into the metal. Doesn't feel like it took it up though. Hit it again. All right, well this low spot here is pretty much gone. And now it's kind of, seems like it's all getting into one, one kind of big low spot. Right about there, look at that. All right, well, it's not really coming out, um, and it's about noon, so I want to uh, get the, the bonnet out here and start playing around with that a little bit. 
But anyway, that's going to be the general process for all of this. Hit it with the shrinking disc, get it nice and hot, cool it. Probably can work on this a little bit more as far as metal work goes with hammer and dolly. But, uh, you know, it's going to be a learning, uh, learning process to figure out what the best way to use this thing is. Take some practice and all that. So next up will be the bonnet. Got the bonnet out here on dollies just temporarily while I strip it. Uh, I hadn't done any stripping to this thing at all. I thought I had. But uh, I got the latches off. I'm going to pull the support bars and the adjustment bars off. Hopefully I don't regret doing that. I don't think it's going to lose too much strength uh, in doing so. But all in all, at least initially, I think the bonnet's in pretty good shape. <coughs> I do have that spot there. Um, I can see some holes there. But hopefully that looks just like weld repair right now. But otherwise, the uh, some dings, obviously, the, the poor nose is, is beat pretty bad. But otherwise, it's in, uh, it's in surprisingly good shape, especially in these little pieces here. I guess these are notorious for rusting out, and, uh, and they're in good shape here. So I do have the black car's bonnet, and I think actually that this one is in better shape than that. So if worse comes to worse, I can always get to that. But uh, just going to continue on with stripping everything down. And then hopefully be able to get it on an easel or you know whatever that white thing is the scissor lift thing i don't remember what the heck those are called get it on that upside down and be able to start cleaning it up all right as you can see i got the bonnet up on the uh, stand there not the most stable of uh, situations i'm not sure that i'm going to keep it this way but we'll see um so i got some issues so this is the back where the um, leveling pins are, I can't remember what those are called, obviously pretty good size hole there. Unfortunately the thing about this is one, it extends into the bracket, you can kind of see that, and two, not only does it go in the piece there on top, but it goes into the support frame that's in the corner there, so um, I may have to take that whole piece out. It's a uh, you know, spot welded in obviously in several places, so we'll, we'll look into that. Uh, another issue I've got here is this support that's under here is no longer attached to the wheel arch. So that needs to be fixed. That could be, uh, as that attaches and gets leveled up, it pulls this whole bottom in a little bit. So that'll give you a little flare uh, of, the, of the fender. Hopefully that doesn't affect my gaps all that much that I struggled so hard with. I, I doubt it. But um, Got some cancer here. I think I had showed you this, some bodno, and if you look on the inside, if I can get in there, I'm going to have to come over here. Um, you can see that cancer that's there. That's not too horrible, not uh, exactly positive how I can go about fixing that, but, but we'll see. Obviously a lot of the uh, bug cobwebs and stuff like that. Um, there's some bondo right here. You can see how it's kind of a sharp edge. I'll investigate that. Got some uh, good amount of corrosion going on there, bubbling and stuff like that. Um, hopefully that cleans up. Uh, let's see, everything else though seems to appear to be just kind of surface stuff. Obviously I've still got some issues that I'm, I'm going to find, I'm sure, but, uh, but I don't think there's anything terminal. That, that's, that's, um, that's for sure. Uh, I do have a cut over here, a tear, whatever you want to call it, uh, right there that I've already identified. And that may all be related to the fact that that wheel arch is no longer supported. Um, so there you go. So the, probably the most complicated of the repairs that I'm going to have to deal with is this guy right here. And uh, I may, like I said, I may just go ahead and uh, bend that flange back on the left there and, and try to pop the spot welds out of this thing and, and just get it off and get it fixed. Check out the black car's piece. Maybe I'll just take the whole thing and, and spot weld it back in. That would definitely be easiest. Ooh, pretty good tear right there too. Um, so that's where we stand with that. I'm going to start cleaning this up. You can see all the nastiness and everything just road uh, grime and from the motor and all that kind of stuff. So probably about all I'm going to really have for the day. I'll, uh, I'll do a final check in here after I work on this for a little while uh, before I leave for the day. About 3.15 time for me to get out of here. As you can see I got about half of the bonnet cleaned up. Support tubes and the adjustment tubes are all over here. I got to clean those up yet, obviously. But uh, I hit the spots that I was concerned with for some pitting. Nothing too serious. 
Again, I have that bracket to contend with. You can kind of see how that one over there has got the hole in it. Got the hole that comes through on this side of the fender, or the wheel arch, and where that comes through over here. Same thing on this side on the front there. Got that hole, and hopefully I got an angle good that you can see there on that. Um, got some pretty good pitting. This was underneath the support tube brackets here, the adjustment tube brackets. The water would obviously just get in there and sit, so that's pretty well pitted. I'm not sure if it's so pitted that I have to replace it, so I gotta look into that. But otherwise, that was about it. So I think I've bounded all of my uh, repairs that I have to do. Obviously, I gotta weld this guy back in, but uh, nothing too significant, it doesn't appear yet, as at least. So uh, that's, like I said, that's uh, the uh, path ahead for me is getting this bonnet taken care of. Be over here sometime during the week to continue on. Otherwise, hopefully everybody's having a good weekend. And hopefully everybody has a good rest of their weekend. Again, a big subscriber push for me. Uh, about 125 more to get to 1,000. Pretty exciting. So uh, I can see the, the end in sight here. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Thanks for liking and thanks for subscribing. I appreciate all the comments as well. Pretty good, uh, pretty good discussion we've been having. So keep that up and uh, hopefully everybody has a good rest of your weekend. Cheers.